there's so many good reviews about Diablo 4. Like, there's so many people saying so many good things about it. And I'm just, I'm not feeling what those people are feeling. <laughs> it's like, my, the thought crossed my mind. Like, how long can you own a game before you can refund it? Have you ever spent 20 hours playing a video game, but by the end of it, you felt like it took you 80 hours? I just beat Diablo 4's main storyline. And let me tell you, I'm looking forward to no longer having to play Diablo 4. As we go about this video journey, maybe you will see eye to eye with me or maybe you'll disagree. Howdy y'all, I'm definitely not a hedgehog and welcome to Pleb Review, the satirical gaming review series where we are now chronicling my playthroughs of video games. So what you see before you is my last few hours with Diablo 4. The way this is set up is what you see behind me is what I am currently watching there. And as I am replaying my own footage in front of me, I will respond to what's happening rather than react as you would see with like a normal live stream or let's play. Uh, the idea being that if I see something more than once and the idea comes to my head more than once, then maybe it's a good idea so I can actually be more productive with my words rather than just spewing off stuff and seeing what sticks to the wall. Let us finally wrap up this Diablo 4 journey. There, there were two episodes before this, but if you hadn't seen them, it's fine. This one's going to be spicy enough, trust me. So where we left off narratively is we conquered a city, we ran into the traitor apprentice, we rescued this woman named Thaisa, I believe. We are still hunting the traitorous uh, apprentice. Uh, what is he? The Horadrin traitor. He was with the group of people that were supposed to protecting all of Sanctuary and all of humanity from both, <laughs> both hell and heaven because uh, the, the heaven is not a big fan of humanity apparently. But he decided to team up with um, the main antagonist, Lilith, and uh, we are hunting him down because that's super not cool, dude. So we don't know what, how to deal with Lilith, so let's try to take out her second in command. The lady we rescued tells us that he has a compound hidden in the desert. So in this desert, like this is like a basically a little mini game where you're being guided through the desert. And if you don't pay attention to the to the guide, like the desert sands are so strong enough that they're gonna kill you. Like I wonder if the story is gonna have like speed runs. Speed running is just completing the game as fast as possible, right? And I wonder if this is supposed to be a, a, an intentional stop gap to kind of slow things down or if there's going to be some funky uh, speed run strat where you can just run through this desert. We get to the secret compound. So this is the uh, Lilith is the main baddie. Elias is her second in command human traitorous person. This is his special little hideout. Uh, so he doesn't even own this. He freaking stole it because of course. So we have hunted him down here to just kill him because why not? Drinking water right now like a good boy. I should be drinking some soda or I wish I was drinking some soda but I'm drinking some water because I gotta go to the gym later. Last time I went to the gym without drinking enough water my kidneys got mad at me. Oh yeah, that's that's good. That's good nothing liquid. Tastes like nothing. It's good for you though. So normally I actually like to watch my footage, um, but like I, I just there's a lot to go through, and I just kind of want to be done. I got seven hours of nonsense to get through, and I have a lot of things I need I need to say about the end of the game. At least that's how I felt when I finished it last night. But all all of this like leading up to it, it's still it's it's just pretty uh, cut and dry from what we've seen. N nothing super important happens up until we finally run into Mr. Lies himself. So th this is actually kind of hilarious. So we snuck into this compound using going through the secret path through the desert. And I'm guessing normally these guys have some type of magic spell or some type of pass that they use to get here. So since they believe this comp secret compound is so secure, they don't even see us as hostiles because they're so overly confident that they are going to be safe here and then they, they, they can't be assaulted by outsiders that if someone who is there they don't recognize they just assume they're a new recruit or something so we're walking around all these people were, were walking past they're their enemies these are just generic enemy models like i can't target them or anything but these are enemies but they don't see us as hostile because like why would one of their enemies be here because their compound is so safe it, it's actually kind of hilarious because one thing one trait we humans just can't seem to get rid of is our hubris so we get through the compound where everyone just ignores us. We go to Elias himself. And finally, out of all the hundreds of people that are here, he actually recognizes us. So I thought this was going to be like some type of hologram or something, but nope, it's just him. Oh, that's right. So he's he's keeping he's keeping tabs on us because of a magic device called the sightless eye. So we're we're not just here to try to kill uh, Elias. We're here to steal his stuff as well because him having magic 
magic items that we don't have. It's just that's unfair, man. Just don't don't be spamming items. So you notice he's got a big health bar and he's got a name, but he died very quickly and he didn't have those little stages, which was very suspicious. It's like, oh, maybe maybe killing him wasn't as easy as we thought it would be. Whatever the cost. Whatever the cost. So this kind of sur surmises the uh, relationship between Lilith and Elias, because I just simply thought that uh, Elias was like some kind of blind follower. But no, it actually does appear that Lilith puts some value in him, uh, just like a tiny bit. I mean, she's going to the compound and talking to him in person, you know, he, he's not just following her shadow. It kind of gives him some credibility. Oh yeah, look, we just killed him and look, now he's back. That, that thing we killed, I thought was some kind of hologram or magic projection, but uh, apparently not. See, see, he's like, how are you still alive? And so we find him again and, and look, once again, there's no uh, stages and the fight gets over super quickly, which makes me believe that this is not a legitimate boss fight. Diablo's trying to trick me. I know something's going on with the Lila. I mean, he's got a big health bar compared to normal enemies, but you just still just work through it like it's no problem. So we, we have decided we can't kill Elias for what Elias for whatever reason. So time to steal his stuff. Yeah, and now, now the compound is full of just nonsense because, you know, game design. I will absolutely go on a bit of a tear about game design here in a minute and story, too. All right, let, let's get through this. I don't got all day. Ah, so we run into Elias for a third time. Let's see if we can kill him now. Oh, look, one more boss fight, still no more stages, and it's over really quickly. How suspicious. We've killed him twice now. Oh, he actually killed me that time, too. <laughs> I was not. Was I not paying attention? What happened? Did I run out of potions? I run away. I didn't heal. Oh, I ran into a damaging element because I was watching the enemies instead of watching where I was going. Classic. Very classic. All right, so let, let's try this again and try not to die like a freaking idiot. Ah, okay, so now it says Elias the Fallen Haradrim, and this is a proper boss fight with three stages and everything. So this will be the fourth time we are fighting this guy. Oh, he even has invulnerability. Okay, so this feels like the actual, maybe he'll die after this time. It's like some uh, one of those video game tropes. You got to kill something three times before it's actually dead. Let's see if that's the case here. One thing I have noticed so far in... Uh, Diablo 4 is just how much my damage is dropping off like there are there are things happening in the background there is scaling happening in the background that I know was going to happen I knew was they were going to do this but every every modern video game does this to some degree where the enemies will get tougher as you get tougher and it's supposed to be like this little race like usually from my experience it's aligned with where you are in the story so as you get stronger the story progresses a little bit above you and maybe you just try to push through it or maybe you are get distracted with side quests and do extra objectives to make yourself surpass the story until it finally catches up though so that's what the witcher does that's what um, kingdom come deliverance um, I think even Skyrim to a certain extent, although Skyrim is probably easy enough to where you can just <laughs> just complete the bomb martial story, no problem. With this game, it seems like the scaling is always attuned or is always aligned against you. So no matter how much you progress, the story will always be ahead. And like as we're going further through the game, the distance between the story and the characters damaging and defenses and stuff like that, that distance is getting even wider and wider. So as I'm going further through the game, the game is getting more and more, not difficult, that's giving the game too much credit, calling it difficult. Getting more tedious. It's taking more time just to do what I'm already doing. Like the reason I have been dying is because I'm trying to rush these fights because they're taking longer like I'm, I'm not I'm not paying attention to what like uh, damaging elements or my own health because I'm trying to kill them as fast as possible because it's taking so much longer to kill basic enemies and even these boss fights like the that Elias boss fight he wasn't he wasn't a real threat to me at any point his health bar was just so freaking enormous that it took so long to kill him and this is going to be a bit of a trend moving forward as we will see oh so this is sad uh, homeboy here in he, I guess the bandits or the enemies saw that he was not one of them and took him out and uh, I think he is an important character to the lore in some capacity because he's a bit of a drunk like a drunk homeless guy and in the first Diablo game there was like a drunk homeless guy that's real endearing to the community is this like him 
Is this the same guy from the first Diablo? I don't actually know. But um, instead of burying him or like throwing over the camel to take him with us, because we just walked. <laughs> we, we could have tossed his body over the side of the camel and taken it with us to get a proper burial. But Loras is like, no, we must leave him. He is dead. There's nothing we can do for him. Seems kind of mean. I mean, we didn't, we, he was just some guy we hired. We didn't know him personally, but still like leaving his dead body in the courtyard of an enemy compound just out in the open for the crows to eat seems kind of rude. So we, we stole a magic device called the sightless eye, which lets you see all things in the world and even to a certain extent, see things in the past and uh, are in the past and the future. Our next big objective really, I think is just to use it because it, it's gonna provide us with some kind of information on what needs to happen next. I mean, it's cool from the lore perspective because there's a whole organization dedicated to its protection. I, um, I forgot, where did it come from? Um, a long time ago, there was an angel that was in like some kind of relationship with a old ancient human. Like not ancient as in she was old, like this just happened a long time ago. And they were in some kind of, they were bumping some uglies and they used the sightless eye. Um, I'm guessing it's an angelic artifact from the heavens to communicate. Like so it was the first long distance relationship, an angel in heaven chatting up with a human down in sanctuary. And now the sightless eye is just kind of sticking around all these years later as a really annoying relic because it's so powerful and a lot of people want it that a whole organization of rogues like were created and it's protection and then they were called uh, like the sisters of the sightless eye and I'm guessing they all got killed so Elias could steal it <clears throat> and now we have stolen it from him so since we don't know where Elias ran off to and we don't know where Lilith is at all we're gonna use this magic angelic device to try to see what it can tell us the big gold MacGuffin shows us some something really fun really awesome is coming up so we are actually physically looking at something that is happening right now this isn't a, a, a cutscene this is live this is going on at the moment at least I think so uh, Lilith is telling Elias her plan, and as as we are doing this, Lilith knows, senses that she's being watched, and she looks directly at us, like it's a window. A window works both ways, and so Lilith knows that we have spied on her, and she also knows that we have the sightless eye. Yes, yeah, so, so because she like she ga she gazed back into the darkness that was gazing at her. She knows exactly where we are now, like our physical location. What's that, what's that Google, that Google meme thing? It's like L Lilith would like to know your location. <laughs> she already does. So we found out from that cutscene that Lilith's true mission is to absorb the essence of her father. So she's a, what? She's a lesser evil? Or I forgot what her role is, but her father is, uh, what's his name? Mephisto. He's one of the big three evils. There's three demons. He's one of them. She is the daughter of uh, Mephisto. And so he is in a weakened state right now because I think of, I think because of the actions of the main players in Diablo 2. And so he's like in a weakened state because of it. And so she wants to absorb his essence and take his place in the throne of or his throne of hell basically so that's what we have f found out and so now we're Lorath is trying to figure out what to do next and i believe we Lorath comes up with a hell mary plan and so we go to meet donan our other friend who who just lost his son he's the last of the two haradrim or one of the two haradrim um there's Lorath and donan yeah they're the only ones left and so we're going to ask the other guy if he can provide some help. And look, we run into a sermon. So Anarius, the, the guy that like doesn't like us, doesn't like humans that much, but still using us for his benefit, he's giving like a sermon at a church. It feels like he's putting on a bit of a ruse here because he it's very we've established that he doesn't like the human race kind of in general. He killed the very first human, the very first of his offspring. Freaking, uh, what was his name? The, he was the first necromancer. We saw it in like the first episode. What the heck was his name? Ah, Rothma. That's who it was. Yes. And then the first episode where I did this, we saw Inarius kill Rothma, who was his first son. Like basically Rothma was like the first human being and uh, Inarius just freaking killed him dead on the spot without even trying to recruit him or see where his alliances fell with in regards to the fight against Lilith. Like Inarius just didn't want to hear it and just killed him on the spot. So Inarius has clearly got no time for human nonsense, but here he is giving a, a sermon to these uh, believers of the light, followers of the light or what have you. The only thing this can be as manipulation. <laughs> Anarius is a narcissist, probably. Oh, finally! 
Oh my god, I completely forgot that this happened. Oh man, this is such a freaking relief. After all of these hours of playing this freaking game uh, in Act 4, what is this, the end of Act 4? Finally, the game decides to give you a horse. I, I've just... Uh, I've been through the big forests, I've been through the mountains, I've been through the countryside, I've been through the desert, and like all on foot this entire time. And now, finally, Mr. Donan is like, hey, you've been doing a lot of hoofing it recently. Would you like a horse? This, and it's just some random side quest where literally Donan, the Herodron guy, he's telling us like, hey, has anyone offered you a horse up to this point? Like, would you like one? And it's like, really, really game developers? We've met Donan hours and hours ago. You could have, you could have just injected the side quest at like hour number six, okay, instead of hour number 16 or whatever. This was a deliberate choice by the developers to slow things down. What the hell am I doing? I think I'm trying to get a screenshot here. This was a deliberate choice by the developers to artificially extend the game time. I refuse to believe any other scenario. But yeah, we finally, I'm level 32. I'm freak, level freak, I'm over my level 30 over level 30 and you're finally getting a god dang horse this should have been available right from the get-go game developers i've had this pre-order bonus like well you you are told you pre-order the game you are given a horse that's kind of what i thought i was like yeah you're given you're given a horse you're given like some cool bridle and saddle and decorative stuff to put on your horse, but uh, you don't get to use it until level 30 freaking two. <laughs> I didn't pre-order the game intentionally. I, I actually bought it early on accident. Like if you, if you pre-order this game, we'll give you this free mount. It's like, oh, cool. Will I get to use it immediately from the get-go? And they're just like, no further questions. <laughs> Now that I mentioned Kingdom Come Deliverance, that game gives you a freaking horse within the first 10 minutes. This game doesn't give you a horse for 15 freaking hours. I really love Kingdom Come Deliverance. I should make a video on that game next. Uh, Harondran number two told us to come talk with Harondran number one. Oh wait, how did that go? Oh no, no, no. Lorath is Harondran number one. This is, Donan is Harondran number two. So he goes back to their their base of operations, which they aren't using for some reason. Like they just don't, this, this is a big vault of knowledge and resources and we just don't use it. Uh, Donan sees that somebody has been here recently. Uh, yeah, it was us, also a friend uh, by the name of Nairel. Yeah, I remember her. She's the one that freaking died. Or no, she didn't die. Her mother freaking died. So I guess we helped her resurrect her mom, kill her mom again, and we kind of just left her onto her own devices. And after she buried her mother, she came back here to study the Haradrim and the world as a whole. I guess her point as a character is to kind of inspire these two that there is still a point to the Herodric order because there are still people who want to learn and better the world and she kind of has this young naivete saying that she wants to be a student of the Herodric ways ah, so when we were here earlier and found that necromancy book we went left and I was wondering what this other door is and now we're finally doing it he is looking for a soul stone okay that I forgot what it was so a soul stone is like the ultimate Diablo MacGuffin. It's been used in the lore before to entrap other uh, primevals. I believe all three of the primevals in Diablo 2 were trapped in soul stone. Like all three of the main bad guys got captured. The, the plot right now is for us to just use a soul stone on Lilith because it's the only thing in this game universe that exists that can deal with huge demon problems. It's just trap them in a soul stone. Oh yeah, finally. So we get, we get through the dungeon. We figure out what needs to happen with the soul stone. All right. So we have found his notes on how to deal with the soul stone, and now we are back. We ask Nayrel, "What have you been up to?" And Nayrel tells us that she basically invites herself along on this journey, saying like, "Lilith killed my mom, and I know your heroic ways, so that is enough qualification for me to join you on this adventure." Like I. I mean, I guess. Never mind that she, we were told she's a child. Like, when we first introduction, we were told she's not an adult person, but I guess now she's aged significantly since we first met her. Uh, so we asked Donan, what is a soul stone? 
the bane of the Haradrim, but also our greatest weapon. But he tells you there, the Soul Stone comes with a cost, and we're, we, we, we aren't familiar what this cost is. Like, is it a couple gold pieces? Like, I, I got some change to spare. I'll give you some gold pieces. So the, he says that you become a prisoner just as much as the demon in the stone. Because the demon, like, while you're guarding the soul stone, which it has to be guarded constantly, like, the demon that's inside is just in your head the entire time. Like, he is whispering in you, giving you nightmares, and there's nothing you can do about it uh, until you have, like, just lost your mind and released the demon, or um, something something takes the stone from you and releases him. So, the, the soul stone is not a perfect solution it's like a band-aid basically it, it just feels like su it's such a perfect macguffin like it's the ultimate weapon that is just built to be temporary <laughs> the older Horadrim couldn't invent a soul stone that like had a mute button so the demon inside couldn't actually like give you horrific nightmares while you were trying to guard him and keep him trapped i, I guess that's too much to ask they should have gotten a, a deluxe version of the soul stone not the basic one you gotta pay that $5.99 a month, otherwise it doesn't work properly. Look how much faster I can traverse. I mean, I know I'm speeding up the footage, but man, you can just zoom, zoom through the world with the mount. Man, I wish I had been doing this from the very beginning. So here they are, Donan and Lorath are united once again with a common goal, well, semi-common, of they need to get some kind of soul stone, and Donan is the best one to handle that. And while we're uh, while we're corrobor corroborating the, our, our narratives and lining up our objectives, um, you see our, our friend, the uh, tattooed chick walks out of the building. She is still, um, those tattoos were the things that Elias was trying to use for a summoning ritual. We probably, like, the, the ritual we interrupted did not actually, um, like, it wasn't canceled. <laughs> He, Elias was trying to use her to summon a some type of lesser evil, uh, some type of big bad demon, and we interrupted the ritual, but it it didn't cancel it out. Like she's still covered in all those tattoos. And mere moments ago, we told Lilith where we were exactly by using the sightless eye, because we gazed upon her with the eye, and she gazed back at us, which is very cool and very intimidating. But um, yeah. The tattooed chick that has like 99% of a ritual tattooed on her body has now just wandered off right after we told the enemy where they could find us. Probably not the best idea to not keep an eye on her because now look what's happening. Oh, a sandstorm. Where did this come from? This probably isn't good. Oh, look at this sandstorm tornado making a perfect arena. Could we possibly have a boss fight coming up? <laughs> yeah, so he tells us using the eye uh, to see where they were told them where we were. Kind of a double-edged sword. We interrupted his ritual in like a magic tomb on a pedestal with like people getting sacrificed. But apparently he could have just finished it out like in the middle of a desert with no problem. Ugh, all the sand is making me thirsty. So now he has summoned one of the lesser evils, I believe, Andariel, Maiden of Anguish. Her whole shtick is that she is just a huge fan of all things that inflict pain. So if you are hurt in any capacity, she she just loves it. She wants to make you hurt. She wants to make other things hurt. And so this is one of the most involved boss fights yet. Like she has huge damaging elements that that cover the entire battle arena, and she also has these annoying things here and here that they're they're basically snares. They're basically landmines that trap you in place. So she has tra she has a attacks that track you she has huge damaging elements and she has these snaring totems that lock you in place so that she can actually do damage to you it is quite um quite in depth very well thought out boss fight very much appreciated i think up to this point this was the most engaging boss fight like the one with the um um, Astaroth, the guy that rode on the three or the five-headed dog or whatever like it was very cinematic it was it was fun but uh, this fight like kept me on my toes, made me think what I had to do. If, if she was reused in the future and like a super hard or nightmare difficulty version, uh, I would not be disappointed to fight her again. And we, we kill her and I guess she gets sent back to hell. I'm not entirely sure how this works because her body physically doesn't move, I don't think. Yeah, I think it just stays there. Demons can't actually die. They just get sent back to hell. Um, so whatever ritual that was locking her, keeping her sealed, that Anarius had to use on Thaisa, like, is that something that has to get done again? Or was this like a one-time imprisonment? 
And now that she's back from that initial summoning, like, will she just respawn and come back? I don't know. It's very convenient for the, the, the lore writers and developers of the game if they just want to bring these demons back because it's written in the lore that they can't actually die. They just go back to hell and then they can come back in a moment's notice. At least seemingly. Oh, look, here they are. The huge heroes, these Haradrons, protectors of the world or whatever, they were sitting here just chilling with their little protective bubble while I was dealing with Andario. Yeah, so a lesser evil. So there's 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 three big baddies, the greater evils, and Andario is a lesser evil. They're like this, the second one below. Our Elias summoned one willy-nilly in this desert, and we had to solo her. One of the, one of the strongest things that could come from hell. We just fought her on a whim in the desert, ill-prepared, with all of our allies that were perfectly capable of helping us just chilling in the church right next door. Like, really making me feel like the main player character here. Like, I don't feel like I'm a member of the team. I feel like I'm dragging you idiots along on this, on my adventure. Uh, so here's here's a part where the Mr. Donan here provides some advice that is something you could take with you to your grave. It's actually really good writing here. The answers you need are often in the place you least want to look. Like that is that is something I would like get tattooed, or maybe that's that's a bit much. That's something I'd get like mounted on the wall. That that's just some damn good advice. Genuine good writing right there. Okay, so we have just killed one of the most strongest demons in the entire hells. Just on a whim and now we're about to go to a swamp for two things one is we're still trying to find out where elias is and how or, or excuse me we, we're still trying to find out how the heck we could kill elias because he's just so freaking annoying he needs to die and we need to do something with this uh, soul stone he's complimenting me for standing against a lesser evil and living like mr lorath you know, I would not have mind if you'd stepped out of the church and helped me. Uh, last time I was complaining about not having gummy bears to eat, and this time I still do not have gummy bears to eat, but I do have Triscuits. I don't know if these are something I should be eating right before going to the gym, but I don't care. I'm hungry. Ah, so we go to the swamp. I think it's called the Havazar. Here we are. So, Mr. Donan here has the, the soul stone on his person, and he asks us to go to this castle dungeon because it's a place of just raw anger and hatred, I'm guessing, from its past. Like a lot of a lot of terrible bad things happen here in relation to like, hatred. And since Lilith is the a daughter of hatred, we have come here to attune the soul stone to her. I guess because like you can't use a, a soul stone unless it has the appropriate theme. Yeah, so a soul stone can't be used unless it has the appropriate theme. And since we have like a blank soul stone, we need to give it the the theme of hatred or something. So we brought to this, some, a lot of negative emotions going on here. So we got to attune the soul stone to this place. And here comes one of my favorite freaking nonsenses in any game ever. If I remember correctly. Yeah, so there's, there's, there's linger. This is such a magical place and there were such strong emotions of hatred that there's just hatred laying around. And since Lilith is the daughter of hatred, we could put all these negative feelings into the soul stone. At least we would be able to. I'm struggling with my freaking chips. I have scissors. A victory! Oh, I forgot. So we didn't create the soul stone. We acquired it. Or we always had it, because it was the stone that was holding Astaroth, the demon that was used to, or that um, his son was used a uh, sacrifice to summon. I'm guessing when we fought Astaroth, or removing the stone in some capacity, damaged it. And so, now, we've gathered Donan, we told him, look, I know your son just died, but we gotta move on past that. We dragged ourselves, we dragged him to a desert, we dragged all of ourselves to a swamp, go through a dungeon, and just just to find out that the soul stone is broken you didn't realize it was broke like you were you didn't like take a good look of it while we were on our journey and it wasn't until we were in a dungeon that's just filled with hateful spirits that you actually finally realized that the soul stone wasn't going to work for whatever reason <laughs> like dude what even is story writing man what even is game design i went you made me you dragged my ass all the way through this dungeon all the way through the swamp just for the soul zone to not even work when we get there. Deckard Kane would never. All right, he would never allow this. Actually, he probably would. 
So since since this swamp is such a magical place, we go ask one of the locals, like, hey, who knows a lot about magic? And she's like, oh, there's this witch over crying down the street who knows. And we go to this witch's house, like, oh, it's Thaisa. It's the chick that was all tatted up and using that summoning ritual. She's actually a powerful witch, which is just news to us, apparently. Could have used your help with that Indario freaking monster I fought all alone in the desert, but nope. And I guess you were busy. So she was used in the summoning ritual, so maybe that took a lot out of her. Man, I'm gonna eat all of these Triscuits and have no appetite left for lunchtime. They're so good though. Crackers made and like covered with the powder of fried chicken r residue or whatever it is. They're so good. It's kind of funny if someone ever asked you, what is a Triscuit? What does it taste like? You'd tell them, well, it tastes like chicken, like, like the meme or whatever. But no, these actually taste like chicken because they're covered in like fried chicken powder or whatever. It's delicious. Also gives you one hell of a tummy ache if you eat too many, which I'm about to rediscover. It's moments like these where I wish I was at the point of you know, having a significant audience. Now watch me watch me fumble the bag on that loot goblin. <laughs> where I, I wish I was at the point with having an audience where I can like do this live streaming, like this part live. Just cause like we're at a point in the story where there's really nothing important going on. I mean, I still gotta review the footage anyways, but it would be nice to have like a chat to, to talk talk with some folks while I'm, instead of just being, you know, alone with my Triscuits. And so we went on a little detour. So, so Mr. Donan here is having troubles repairing the soul stone, you know, the same stone that was m very recently lodged in his own son's head. Well, because of some uh, emotional uh, emotional issues associated with the soul stone, or maybe just himself, um, Donan can't fix the soul stone the way it needs to be done. And so Thaisa has this theory of maybe it's the struggles with, um, he's, he's got internal struggles that need to be resolved. So what we're going to do, the Swamp Witch has this ingenious idea, is we're going to gather some crazy monster ingredients from all throughout the swamp forest. We're going to put them in a big pot and have ourselves a bit of a broil. <laughs> and she makes this suspicious stew like straight out of Minecraft. And so what this does is sends Donan down this spiritual journey. Well, I guess we're just we just nap. He's he's over here he's over here tweaking out and we're just taking a nap and she's like I don't know doing magic tricks and so donan we we take this magic swamp tea drinks the magic swamp juice and donan is like losing his damn mind and what this results in his visions so he sees he has a, a conversation with his son's spirit where he he basically tells him that uh i think like the spirit tells him that you got me ready to to face what i needed to face and now I'm ready to, to face the the afterlife or whatever. He said, yeah, I asked him, why did you let me join the military? Why'd you let me go? And his father says, you are ready. And then the spirit tells him, well, now I'm ready again to move on into the next afterlife or whatever. And this brings Donan some closure about his son's death, which is supposed to be this touching emotional moment for us you know that are witnessing this even though, i don't know how we're witnessing this when our freaking player is just asleep over there but so listen so, so this game has a lot of loss so far a lot of themes of loss so narel lost her mom and her first instinct was to go was to go get some necromancy bring her mom back to life and then had a conversation with her mom's ghost about letting go or what have you and now Donan is having issues with the death of his son and the solution is to go get some magic swamp water so we can have a vision and talk. I don't know if he was actually talking to his spirit or if he was just hallucinating, but he got to, I don't know, say goodbye to his son one more time. And it's just, what is, what is the message the developers are trying to, are trying to tell us that if you have great loss in your life the only way you're going to deal with it is through like magic shenanigans <laughs> like that's not a very good message to deliver upon the player like if you if your mom dies or your son dies there's no hope for you unless you you go drink some swamp water or go practice some necromancy like it, it doesn't it doesn't it's not a good look i have comforted people who have dealt with severe loss i have held men crying over the loss of their wives or a, a friend who who lost her mother in high school like i i know very well what it looks like to deal with intense grief like this and it, it's not through magic nonsense okay it is through time and companionship and if you don't have time and you or if you don't have time and you can't find companionship there's a third option that is alcohol but uh, that is that is uh, not a very good option because it can lead through its own rabbit hole of problems. But still, out of those three things, magic shenanigans is not one of them. 
Oh, so now, so so we we also drank the tea, right? We got to drink the punch. We got to drink the swamp juice, and we, we so this isn't a vision we're having here. We actually got kidnapped by Mephisto. This is one of the three primevals. His daughter is the main person we're trying to deal with. He just takes us into his own little realm and offers us a deal to where we can work with him because he tells us like the Haradrim have a huge history of failure and Anarius, the big angel dude, has already failed. He just hasn't realized it yet. And so the, the Mephisto, the big baddie, tells us like, look, you can team up with me and we can deal with Lilith together and things will just continue as normal. She will be killed or imprisoned or what have you, and he will remain in his position as one of the three primevals. And it's, it's like, I really wish there was an option to just go along with this. Like you have a splitting path where you can be you can be the Haradrim hero that uses the soul stone to, to defeat the bad guy or you could just team up with Mephisto one of the most powerful creatures in all of hell to put his daughter in her place <laughs> like I would have totally loved look there's even three different paths here you go left there's a portal to continue the game about normal and you go right there's nothing I wish I wish if you went right there would be a portal where Mephisto just takes you to the end of the game basically and you get to fight Lilith on the spot alongside him and just boom story over <laughs> maybe Mephisto absorbs her power and takes over the world but you know whatever it still would have been fun ah uh, so now that both Donan and myself are done hallucinating <laughs> <laughs> the the magic swamp juice has run off, has, has run its course. We we go back to the witch's hut, and so he has he has mentally gotten over this this block this mental block of having to deal with this stone and the loss of his son at the same time. So now now he's ready to actually do it. And we get this very cinematic cutscene of him fixing the stone. And as as the engineer, that's what this this is. In case anyone's wondering, the the best method for doing any kind of important work always involves striking it really hard with something really heavy and so the don in here he's supposed to be this magic wizard man but he's still he's still got this engineer spirit within him because this crazy magic prison stone is being fixed by just whacking it with a hammer sure he's chanting and imbuing some magic nonsense in it but what he what is he really doing He's whacking it with a hammer, and like the engineer in me just loves, loves the scene. If you hit it hard enough, you can fix anything. So all of this was just to fix the soul stone thing, the MacGuffin, because it was broken. So the dungeon where we went to originally, where things just didn't pan out, we have to go back there and do it again. <laughs> oh, but now we get distracted, so. So that was one half of this journey. This other half is dealing with... Lorath. And we are back. I know it may not look like it, but I just came back from lunch. And I'm also working on my third bottle of water. Here's where some conspiracy theorist down in the comment section says that there's only been one bottle of water this entire time. Ah, that's good stuff. Tastes like a whole lot of nothing, but it's good for you. Let's see here. What were we doing again? So we just told our Lor Lorath here that Donan didn't do so hot with the stone, but we eventually got it fixed. Tim away. Oh! Now I remember what we're doing here. So this uh, old lady lives in the swamp. She is immortal. Oh, okay. So Elias did whatever she did to become immortal. She tells us where to go to find out who knows how to become immortal. Because that's probably where Elias went. So it, it's a whole lot of he said, she, uh, she said about people pointing us to other people who point us to other people. The Tree of Whispers. Ancient ma mystical tree of, of knowledge, straight out of like Elder Scrolls lore. <laughs> they got they got magic trees and that too for the uh, Argonians. For this whispering tree has the knowledge of how to get immortality. And since Elias is clearly immortal because we killed him four times and he keeps coming back, we decide that we need to go to this tree in order to find out what's the deal is. So we just got done dealing with a dungeon by ourselves because this this game has suddenly not cared about us making feel like the main character. And now, because we're in this stupid magic swamp, we got more magic nonsense we get to deal with. So what this is, is incense, some 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 purple smell good that gets you all nice and high. So this is the way it, the way to open the path to the uh, freaking uh, magic tree. Well, it turns out the magic tree is very uh, sentient, as we will soon find out. And well, it has influence on the world, but it can't do it directly. It's, I mean, it's a tree. 
So it has little agents, little uh, associates in the form of animals. And I guess um, being imbued with this magic tree's nonsense, these animals get quite large. Because the first agent we run across is an enormous snake. A giant serpent. It's the most terrifying thing in any video game ever. We get high off of this this uh, incense that I picked up from some dungeon. And now this enormous snake comes to pay us a visit while we're all pa a visit while we're all passed out. And it's about to move ahead of us and we get to follow it wherever it's uh, to its destination which leads us to the magic tree. It's one one hell of a security system I got I got to imagine. So now this thing that at first I thought was a fallen down log, that is the body of a snake. And we go on through this maze by following its enormous body. Like, this thing is crazy. And of course, Nyrell, she uh, she got some of that magic uh, incense smoke juice. So she's tripping balls at the moment. Now, <laughs> eventually, the incense magic stuff works its way into Lorath. And now he can see the serpent as well. On this entire time, we are just hearing whispers. I mean, we're going after a thing called the Whispering Tree. It would make sense that as you get closer to it, you start hearing whispers. So a little bit further down the line, the tree is just no longer whispering to us. It's straight up just yelling at us. We're basically getting ragged on by some strange voice in the distance. Multiple voices, actually. And that is the tree giving us a hard time as we're getting closer. Ah, so the tree already knows why we are here. So it must be some of its agents that have been spying on us. Now, I don't know if this is some type of challenge that the tree is sending us down, or if this is just how the swamp is normally. And all the nonsense we're running into and all the things we have to kill along the way, that's just <laughs> that's just what the, the swamp's normal state of being. Ah, so we finally made it. This tree of whispers is actually a magic, like it's a magic tree, but the whispering part is heads. The tree is covered in hanging heads that are all like immortal and alive. And they're the things doing the whispering. So they, uh, we tell them we're after a man named Elias and they are familiar with the name. So Elias made a deal with the tree for knowledge. And there is a payment that the tree requests of people seeking knowledge. So they will tell you what you need to know, but you must give them your head when you die. And I guess everything you know gets added to the tree's collective knowledge. And that's why this tree like knows so many things. Because it's just covered in heads of people that know secrets and stuff. So Elias made a partnership with this tree to learn how to become immortal. And so when he died, he just resurrected himself. Or whenever he dies, he just resurrected himself. When the deal is with the tree, um, whenever you die is you're supposed to your head is supposed to be sent to the tree as an offering They actually have an agent that does that for them They are very annoyed with Elias because he didn't keep up his end of the bargain He didn't give the payment of his head <laughs> So they're like, oh, yeah, we'll actually help you deal with Elias for free because that dude owes us You're just gonna be our deck collectors. Yeah, go get it. Go go get him We'll tell you what you need to know so you can go get the bastard uh, so the, the tree told us that the answers we seek are hidden in a coffin in a sea of wreckage. And there's like some storm coast to the east, conveniently right next to the swamp, where a bunch of ships have been crashed over time. So now we're going down to this wreckage for this literal like city of broken ships to find a single coffin that has the answers we seek. I mean, uh, thematically, walking around a bunch of broken ships is pretty cool. Practically, if this were happening in real life, I'm sure this would be very annoying. So we come to a locked door and Nayrell heads ahead of us. She's still following us along in this little journey and something horrible happens to her. We find her on the other side of the locked door, um, completely knocked out and injured. So she went ahead to try to open the door from the other side. She got ambushed by these dead, whatever these things are, drowned dead. Ah, so the, the drowned, as they're called, have some type of infection that they cause upon uh, people who are not main characters like me, or uh, lore significant characters like Lorath. So that's some disease, I don't know, scurvy? I, I didn't think scurvy was, uh, was uh, infectious like this. But uh, the only solution is amputation. So Nayrell here 
the the child, as we were told earlier in this adventure, the child is about to lose her arm. <sighs> sounds sounds brutal, like the, the sound of burning. He heated up his uh, spear so that he could cut off her arm and cauterize it, and she he also threw her arm into the fire. So whatever this sickness thing is 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 very bad, but because we are the main part, the main player, it, it doesn't apply to us. <laughs> How convenient. So she just lost consciousness, understandably, and uh, we, we will come back to that once she has regained consciousness. But now we are told by Lorath that he must tend to her, and we will continue searching for this coffin in this sea of wrecked ships on our own. Ah, so this is a this is the coffin. It's a magic coffin, apparently, that leads to a dungeon, because, of course, everything about this game is just dungeons. Oh, you see that the, uh, while this cutscene's going on, a snake just slithered, uh, slithered by? I wonder if that snake is an agent of the tree. I wonder if that was intentional. Look how enormous this coffin is, too. Like, I know I'm not a tall dude, but this coffin is gigantic. It's probably because they knew they were having to put the druid class in here. And, the, and as if anyone who's seen my first episode knows how I feel about the druid's character design. This is actually freaking terrifying. You get into this coffin and it just starts sinking and I'm guessing it's filling up with water and you just get to listen to your character basically start drowning. <laughs> oh look, the snake is back. That's got to be an agent of the of the whispering tree. I mean, it does it doesn't kill us. It's basically this coffin is basically a teleportation a teleportation device, but uh, that's one hell of a way to teleport is to get freaking drowned. Reminds me of a book um in the Sword of Truth series. So Rothma was the original necromancer, and apparently he was immortal as well. Well, I mean, he, he lived forever until his own father killed him. Since he was the first necromancer, and Elias keeps coming back from the dead, maybe those, maybe Elias and Rothma's, uh, uh, getting knowledge on Rothma's techniques makes some kind of sense as to why he is currently immortal. Because it's not like Elias is unkillable, like he can't be damaged. No, we've killed him four times now, but he keeps coming back. It would be reasonable to think it's some kind of necromancy, and so now we are in the tomb of the original necromancer. Or not his tomb, his like personal home, I guess, or his personal study. So apparently Lilith wanted to stop, put an end to the war between angels and demons, the eternal conflict. And I guess her solution to doing that was finding a way to eradicate all angels and all demons. Well, Inarius, he actually has a bit of buyer's remorse in the, into this whole building sanctuary thing and being the father of humans. Uh, Inarius wants to get, have a place in heaven once again. He wants to go back into the heavens. And so once he found out that Lilith's plan to end the eternal conflict was just to kill everyone, and Narius is like, well, I can't be having that if I want to go home eventually, so you are getting banished. And so that is why Narius, uh, the big angel dude, and Lilith are not on speaking terms. So he, he mummified his finger, El Elias mummified his finger, left it behind, and so every time he died, he transferred his essence into his finger, and then like resurrected himself from his finger. Like I'm guessing the idea is you don't need the full body to resurrect yourself using necromancy. You just need a small piece of your body that has some of your essence. So yeah, he we found the finger that had his essence in it that he's been using to resurrect himself. And so now we will go back to Laura and he tells us to toss the finger into the fire. And that's just immortality solved. So, Lorath found us floating in a coffin, so like, was that whole trip through the dungeon just like a big, uh, a big vision of some kind, or were we actually transported there? So, Nayrel, she's recovering from her arm being severed, and also the emotional toll of, of losing an arm or a limb. And now she's pulling a big guilt trip on us, saying that because she's lost her arm, she is now more useless than she already was, you know, being a child, as the game told us earlier. And now she's like, oh, you're going to put me somewhere and just leave me to be taken care of. It's like, uh, yeah, that's that's what we should do. You are horrifically injured and you're not, ill experienced or inexperienced. And like, <clears throat> there, there's no reason for Nerel to continue this journey. I mean, there's plot reasons at the very end. But like practically, she she's not a member of the Haradrin. She's done some studying and knows some of their spells and their their language and stuff. But she's a very young, like very very young and now grievously injured individual. Her contribution to the rest of this conflict 
we would be quite minor, I would think. But according to her, she is she she must continue this because she's she's good enough, I suppose. So the dungeon we first went to with Donan by ourselves that like this is the embodiment of pure hatred or whatever, where we went all the way through just to find out the soul stone was broken. We are now back. We got the whole gang together. We got uh, Taisa, the uh, formal ritual cow, uh, catalyst turned into Swamp Witch. And we got Nyrell, one hand less uh, child, and Haradric student. And of course, the two other like Haradric survivors, or Haradrim survivors. But let's see if we can actually get this freaking soul stone ritual taken care of for the second time around. Oh, I guess, well, okay, so Nerel has done so much studying of the Herodric ways, she can participate, Herodric ways, she can participate in this, like, soul stone repairing ritual, so. But she's more, she's more powerful as a, as a spellcaster, as I'm giving her credit, it would seem. Oh, and, um, our witch friend is, um, sensing that Elias is coming here. I don't exactly know how he knows where to go, or how he knows we are here doing this with the Soul Stone. It's not established how he got that information. But we, uh, we just got done messing up his, inv his invincibility loophole that he discovered. So now we're about to go face off against him, and he is about to get shook. I think this is an exact copy of the fights we've already had with him. It's, it's nothing special. Wow, nothing special, but it is a long one, yeah. What I was saying earlier about the damage scaling, it just, it feels well into effect here. That fight took forever. And look, 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 the hubris on this man. How many times must you kill me before you find out you cannot kill me? And then look. I have been to the deepest chambers of the sunken temple. I've been to your temple, Elias. I've been, I've been seeing your furled finger. Oh, the, sh the look in his eyes. I'm guessing it was a pinky finger. Wow, she's got the zoomies. So I thought that was him running away for like a phase two, but uh, apparently no. He, so Elias ran away from that fight, runs into the woods, and then just collapses. Like, what a, what a hell of a way to go. The, the right hand of Lilith, the, in, the uh, invincible Herodric traitor, is just going to be dying in a puddle of mud in the friggin' swamps. And this is actually... This is amazing character development right here. His his final breaths, pl uh, plural. He it takes a while for him to actually die, but his final breaths on the mortal plane are him just ragging on his former teacher. Like he's not repenting, he's not remorseful. No, 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 no. He stands by everything he did, and he's just going to talk absolute trash up until his final moment against his former teacher. <laughs> it's like. He's not a good guy, uh, Mr. Elias here. He's definitely a bad dude, but man, do I gotta be a... I gotta commend him staying on brand. Yeah, he calls Loyath a, a coward. His final thing to say to his to his mentor, his former mentor and teacher, is calling him a coward. And now uh, Taisa here, the witch, is going to finish him off. The tree does not forget oaths and does not forget debts. Forgive debts, excuse me. So, yeah, um... Taisa got to kill him. All that chasing. We've been chasing this Elias character for all this time, and we're not even the ones who get to kill him. It's uh, the freaking Taisa, because, you know, good on her, I guess. And this crow. It was close to the camera, right? I thought it was just, like, normal perspective. No, this crow is enormous. And he, uh, it removes his head and takes it to the tree to add to the tree's collection. Very morbid, but also pretty dang cool. So, we come back from dealing with Elias, and... We now, we, we gather here outside of the, the dungeon we were just in, and we notice Lorath is not here. Where where did he go? Where is Lorath? Ah, so uh, Lorath didn't get the information we needed from Elias. Elias spent the last few minutes on this earl, uh, on this world just, just ragging on Lorath. And, but his, tr the, uh, Elias' head got taken to the tree to add to its knowledge. So the tree now knows where Lilith is and where she is, uh, where her final nonsense is happening. And so uh, the freaking big brain that is on Lorath 
he has decided that he is not a coward. Elias was wrong to call him a coward. He's going to go to that tree. He's going to get that knowledge. And he's going to have to pay that debt. And the, the one day his head will be removed from his shoulders. And he will have to contribute to the tree, the whispering tree's knowledge. And it really feels kind of shallow like as as uh, we will see here momentarily i'll explain my my meaning here yeah so he came to the tree he asked it where to find lilith and now like we know where to go we know how to finish this damn game but he lorath will now have to give his head to the tree as a uh, tribute and it's kind of it's really hard to see but elias's head is actually like right here very good attention to detail yeah, it's like right up here <laughs> and for like the rest of the game like his head will be on there he even talks to you at some point so the tree tells her uh excuse me the tree tells lorath that lilith is in a city and the city this chaldeum or whatever actually opened up the doors to let her in like this whole city just basically submitted itself to Lilith's dom to Lilith's rule and Lilith's domains. So here, here, here comes up the the kind of ridiculous part. So we go to the city, and we find that there are soldiers of the the Cathedral of Lights of the the church, basically crusaders almost. They are everywhere, and they have whole camps set up. Oh, also, it's raining blood because for you know prophecy reasons. So, like, like Miss Lorath, listen to me, Lorath. Listen, Lorath, I'm talking to you, Lorath. If every of like if every or damn near every freaking knight of the church was going following the angel Inarius to a specific location, do you not think that we would find that suspicious? Like, if if Lorath had waited like. 12 freaking hours for us to just go home for a bit and kind of re uh, regroup ourselves. We would know that Inarius, the angel, has left and all of his armies have left. Like, gee, I wonder what they could be doing. Maybe Inarius knows where Lilith is and he is going to go g uh, go after her. Like, Lorath, you did not have to get this tree of not the tree of whispers knowledge. You didn't have to commit your head to to be forever used as its as one of its vessels for knowledge or whatever like we could have just waited less than a day to find out or just to discover that all of the church's armies were going to one specific city like that might have been kind of suspicious and we could have just asked any of these soldiers like hey what's going on and they would have told us oh we're here to go after lilith because she's downstairs like the whole heroic sacrifice was just so ridiculous so completely unnecessary i mean we might have even asked anarius because he's he's just real big on pride and hubris and anarius might have just told us like yeah lilith is in chaldeum and our great armies will march at dawn to vanquish her and and like lorath you should be feeling quite foolish right now oh also because this uh whole city just like opened the doors for lilith and invited her in basically assisting her on her mission to the to the hell gate that's in the basement the entire like city has been condemned so yeah and all, also it's filled with their cultists so these knights have been very uh i don't know liberal with their interpretation of who is a cultist and who is just like a city citizen and these knights have just been wreaking havoc on the residents of this city and not to mention there's a literal gate to hell in the basement of the city that has now been opened so there's demons everywhere doing all kinds of madness there's knights fighting those demons but also killing many of the residents of this city because um they I believe most of them are a good majority of them are cultists and see look they aren't even helping us fight they just killed like a, a civilian or maybe it was a cultist i don't know and we're over here fighting demons right next door and they're just like un unconcerned so we're we're about to meet with the angel anarius so he's here giving a pep talk to his boys about this big fight they're about to go on and he says here, Lilith flees to the gates of hell. This is the first time we've talked to him since like the beginning of the game. So he knew. This confirms what I said earlier. He knew where Lilith was going and that there was a gate underneath this uh, hell gate underneath the city. So the whole idea of Lorath committing some 
great sacrifice to the tree of knowledge to find out this information just seems super shallow and unnecessary because freaking angel guy over here knew the entire time or at least for a significant amount of time and so we come to challenge him and say look are you really sure you can deal with lilith we have another plan of what we could do so lorath tells him basically that we have this soul stone and we're, we're also going into hell but we're going to be ones that stop lilith not you idiot and the guy's like, oh, how are you going to stop anything if you don't have your soul stone? And he just steals it from us. So Mr. Inarius thinks that the prophecy, the one about Lilith's uh, coming of into sanctuary and causing all of this nonsense, he thinks it's about himself. So us with our soul stone is inconsequential. He doesn't actually know that prophecy is about the main character. It's about us. Since he thinks it's about him, he's the only one that could stop Lilith, so we don't need that silly soul stone anyways. So now we're discussing how the heck are we going to deal with Lilith that the soul stone is gone. Well, Nyrell, the, the genius that she is, is like, hey, hey guys, look, um, our one ally ditched us and our one weapon was stolen by said ally, our former ally. Um, however, I'm sure you didn't realize this, but the main character is standing right here. Maybe they can do something about Lilith. Like, <laughs> and Donan's like, oh yeah, you killed like two lesser evils. It, the, the, the daughter of hatred should be a breeze for you. And it's kind of annoying that, the, that they're right. But, like, really? I was... I have to rescind what I said in my previous video about this game making you feel like... Uh, like, not powerful. Making you feel like you are uh, not, like, a... Like, overpowered main character syndrome, I guess you could call it. And, and now the game's just like, well, we don't have the soul stone. But luckily, the you are the main character, and so you could probably solve this problem for us. Like, I, I, it has to be a def, it has to be a term. Main, like main character syndrome has to be some kind of term that I can look up because it it's now starting to apply here. So we were going through the city, catching up to the knights and stuff, and we find Reverend Mother Pravra, Pravra, Prava, yeah. So she is like kind of the head human honcho of the uh, church. She's basically the Cathedral of Light human church equivalent of uh, Elias. So he was the second hand of Lilith. She is kind of the leading member of the church underneath Anarius. And so she's here for moral support. She's not a warrior. She's a priestess, but she's here for moral support, I imagine. It, it looked like we may have some problem with her, but now it, we are going to actually... We're going to join them on their crusade. So, Alorath, ever pragmatic, tells her, like, look, we're both here to stop Lilith. Let's go together. So, she has this troop of knights of maybe, like, ten. But, um, not really, not really portraying well to the player. But the whole city has been completely taken over by knights. Like, the, the entire army. There's, like, ten thousand people here. And we're just in a small group of, like, I don't know, a, a six or ten like, happen, like less than a dozen. Um, but we will see coming up in a cutscene that there's actually thousands of dudes in the city where this is just like a, the head head group of it. This right here is my favorite thing in the entire game right here. <laughs> the voice actress cracks her voice when she says Hark Knights. I like Hark just means like pay attention to me. Or it means like uh, it's like some type of hey or hello. And she yells at the top of her lungs. It cracks her voice. I I mean, it's probably it's probably realistic to being in a blood in a city of dead with the actual rain of blood falling upon you, you know, surrounded by dead humans and demons everywhere that your voice may be a little shaky. But I think um I don't think the voice actress behind this character actually meant for her voice to crack like that, but it, it, it feels genuine. It, it kind of took me out of it. I couldn't help but laugh, but also thematically it probably fits. Ah, so we're finally through the city right up to the, uh, almost to the basement that leads to the Hellgate. And we, we actually got separated there. We killed uh, another lesser evil just in a side room. You know, no big deal. Just, you know, main character things, right? And it's like the developers are setting you up to, oh, you kill Astra, you kill Endariel, and then you kill Duriel, her like two lesser evils back to back essentially and it's like oh look you're 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 so powerful you're so special you're the main character look how great you are and really setting you up for what's to come 
So we've made it through the city. We're about to go into hell. We don't have the the soul stone. And Lorath is just like, we got to keep going. We got to keep pushing. And Donan, the ever practical, is like, look, how are we gonna how are we gonna do this when we don't actually have what we need? And Lorath's just like, just don't worry about it. We'll we'll figure it out as we go along. <laughs> Um, so Nayrell over here has this big brain idea of look Lilith is bad right but she's she's simply the daughter of hatred if we're going to hell and we're going to be face to face with the big bad himself Mephisto the the prime evil you know he's there's only three do three top dudes in hell he's one of them like we should use the soul stone on him because a prime evil is a bigger threat than the daughter of said prime evil which i guess practically makes some kind of sense however like mephisto is in a weakened state from uh, i'm not sure exactly what maybe the events of diablo 2 uh, so but lilith seems to be a full freaking power and doing all of her nonsense just you know without any kind of resistance and so it's like if Mephisto is in this weakened state for however long he is, like, w w would it be too unreasonable just to kind of leave him alone? Like, sure, he may regain power and become a threat down the road, but Lilith is a threat that's happening right freaking now. It's it seems flawed, but uh, of course the game's answer for that is we are the main character, and so if if the if if Lilith is not going into the soul stone well at least at least the main character is here to solve that issue now here comes oh, i'm so upset this is freaking gross not this cutscene this cutscene's fine so we just finished what was that act six yeah so so the big city's done or the, the city portion is done we did the swamp stuff i believe that was all act six or maybe act five i don't i don't remember so this is like the final chapters right we're going into the gates of hell and the level requirement has just jumped up by five levels yeah exactly five levels i'm level 40 the last mission i did was level 39 right and there was this pr there's been this progressive thing throughout the entire story you do one mission at level 10 then the next mission's at level 11 while you're doing the level 10 mission it will like give you enough experience to get to level 11 and then you know you just keep on going the ball keeps rolling the ball keeps rolling but now uh, i yeah, this is unbeknownst to me i didn't even realize what was going on at the time why i was getting so absolutely wrecked in this dungeon here there are like th hundreds of demons in this hell i mean it's hell of course there's gonna be hundreds of demons but they're all every single one of them is level 40 freaking five i'm just level 40 the last mission i did was level 39 and it just jumped from level 40 to 45 five whole levels between like one or between two different missions a five level jump the only reason I can think of for them to do this is they are artificially extending the last few hours of this game's story by saying, hey, look, we don't want players to finish too quickly, so let's just turn up some do uh, turn up some knobs adjust some dials and make the final act of this game many levels higher requirement than the previous one <sighs> and it's so unnecessary like with all the scaling and stuff that goes on like i could have easily been like been perfectly fine with being level 40 for for this like the the enemies the damage and stuff wouldn't have mattered between 40 and 45 but when you are level 40 and you're facing level 45 enemies it results in you being evaporated in mere moments and I, i'm like still running through just trying to see if i can just gun it to the final boss fight which would have been impossible realistically and I, I get to this point and I just get absolutely disintegrated. I get like Thanos snap in a matter of seconds. And I tell myself like, the only option I have, I finally actually realize that all these enemies I'm fighting are level 40 freaking five. And here I am only level 40. That this is not doable. This isn't going to work. The, the, the scaling is just so not in my favor at this time. And so I do the only reasonable thing I can think of and I just freaking bail. Yeah, I'm, I'm dying and I'm actually being teleported like 30 feet to the left and then just dying again. 
And so my only course of action is to just go level up. Like I, I have to increase my character from level 40 to level 45. And the only way, I mean, yeah. So it means I have to go do other stuff. I have to go do dungeons, do side missions or what have you. But those dungeons and side missions and stuff would still stick around at the end of the game. So I, I like, narratively there's no reason to do them and, and practically there shouldn't be any reason I have to do them but because this game is scaled against me so harshly the only course of action is for me to just go grind out levels here I'm just messing around with menus because I'm so frustrated at this point I have to spend multiple day here I am just selecting a side mission just to go try to get some experience and, and level up it took me five or oh, excuse me it took me four days to get from level 40 to 45 just so i could complete this damn game here i am look i i this is this is the recording has split and i'm now level 45 that that jump that took a couple seconds took me four days of progress just to get from level 40 like 40.5 up to up to 45 because the game just decided I should, uh, there should be an arbitrary level requirement to actually beat the game that is higher than the progression would suggest. Like, there, there hasn't been a jump like this. Like, there hasn't been stop gaps this entire time. It's been nice and smooth. Do a mission at level 32, the next mission's at level 33, and then the next mission's at level 34. Then you get to the very end, level 40 to 45, and you gotta spend multiple hours leveling up your character. Like, I'm sure somebody who just plays this game endlessly made me maybe wouldn't even notice but like i'm a i'm a grown dude i got responsibilities i got a three-year-old toddler i gotta take care of and a wife i gotta cook dinner for so all these other life distractions you know of being an adult means it took me four freaking days just to gain five levels oh the game pissed me off oh i had to take a mental break and just spend a minute or two watching TikTok cringe compilations on my phone just so i could reset myself and get back on it because I was just so heated with this freaking game making me spend four days grinding levels just so I can actually complete the main story uh, where where do we where do we leave off oh okay so we're, 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 we're still in hell we find all of the knights uh, well we find most of their bodies I wonder what happened to them they, they're looking a little bit worse for wear than last we saw them oh and that's the mother Prava we find what we believe to be her corpse turns out she's not as dead as she looks but she was carrying the soul stone so anarius gave it to her for safe for safekeeping i'm guessing nobody thought none of the demons must have thought it was uh, important enough to like search these search these bodies i don't know what kind of energies the soul stone resonates but we um uh, you would think it would be quite noticeable and the demons that have done all of this damage all of these nights would have realized that she had something important on her because we just rolled her over and just happened to find it and now Laura, I love this. Laura is like, we should just leave her here. She she's good where she is. So we we accuse her of having the stone while we were in the city, which she did because Anarius entrusted her with it. And so she accuses us of stealing it. Like it was stolen from us, chick. Your angel dude stole it from us, and we're just we're just getting it back. She accuses us of being servants of darkness, and what you know, the ones that are here to actually stop a Lilith. So, even though she is accusing us of being a demon worshippers, we are going to give her a potion to help her along the way, so she can actually escape. Which is just way more than she deserves, in my opinion, because she was keeping secrets from us. She didn't let us participate in the actual fighting, and she is accusing us of heresy for simply taking back the magic device that was stolen from us by her angelic leader. Now, so we made our way through hell. We've killed an absurdly large number of demons to get about halfway through our journey. And so this this dimension we're kind of in is like a prison, I'm guessing, uh, uh, of some kind. And we come across this guy, and he looks like he was trapped in the ground, and somehow our presence has uh, released him. And I have no idea what this is from a lore perspective, uh, Ash Ashava. It, it must be important somewhere. But this demon thing has got to be the one of the best boss fights in the game so far. Like, it is enormous. It has attacks that are enormous. 
and uh, you actually get helpers to fight this time, like dealing with two lesser evils uh, and Ariel and Duriel. You know, that's we just that's just no problem. But this this crazy thing, yeah, we actually get some help for it. And this feels like something straight out of Monster Hunter. Like it's just so large, it moves around so much, it's a tax deal, so much damage. Like I feel right at home with something like Monster Hunter. And and for that effect. Uh, or in that regard, uh, the best strategy is just to stand underneath him. That's how it is in Monster Hunter, and that's how it is here. You just stand at his feet, and you're kind of untouchable. Now, he's not very difficult. I mean, we wipe him out pretty easily. But, man, was it ever fun to actually do that. But so far, out of every fight, maybe even... Maybe even so with the final fight, which we will which we will be seeing here momentarily. That was, like, one of my more favorite boss encounters in the game. Like, period, I think. Uh, so we find that boss, and we, we come across a, a cutscene, basically, of of uh, what what their interaction of the monastery was. And we see her, like, she's freaking barefoot in hell. Like, you couldn't have brought some shoes? I know you're some type of priestess, but come on. And she's singing a prayer with all of the knights while they're about to go into battle. This is The, the imagery here is actually fantastic. I feel like this this game would have made a much better movie than a video game. <laughs> That's Anarius. That's the angel here with his armies. So while the imagery here is fantastic, this is actually kind of ridiculous what happens here. She is she is leading the troops in battle, but like more like spiritually, she's kind of just a cheerleader, and so she she rests here at the front of the column while all of her uh, knights behind her are actually doing the main work, which this tactic here is actually fantastic. Just standing behind a shield wall, sending out your lances to the wave of demons that are attacking. Like, if, if you're going to fight demons in melee combat, that is the way to do it. And, of course, Mr. Anarius sees his ex-wife and feels like he has to do something about it. So they're, they're staying behind. He's going on ahead to actually... Not really contribute so much to the fight, but just to go after Lilith specifically. And apparently his light tendrils could be used as weapons, which I didn't know was a thing. Ah, oh, but this is brutal. This is something straight out of Doom. He takes a horn out of one demon's head and uses it to stab the eye of another demon like dude certainly acting like he's some kind of main character i wish we could deal with demons as quickly as this guy does you know it, it takes us at least like 30 seconds of clicking per demon we come across oh and of course he landed on the ground just to try to kill her real quick but he could have just flown right up to the temple where he knew she was going the entire time and just cut her off at the front. I don't know what all this, uh, what all that pomp and circumstance was of him actually doing uh, fisticuffs with those little norm, like nothing demons. So him and Anarius and Lilith are kind of having this verbal dispute, and while they're doing that, their armies are outside the temple having an actual dispute of proper violence. <laughs> Having a, uh, let's call it a martial dispute. So he is telling her why he is no longer on terms. He's kind of reiterating himself. So he wants to go back into heaven and he thinks that sanctuary, the planet on is an abomination. Um, the humans like Rathma are ad abominations, the first human. And so he killed Rathmon. He probably would kill all of us if he could get him into heaven. And Lilith is making a, about to make a very valid point here. Did they rejoice? She asked, did they rejoice? Did you actually hear anybody in heaven, like, applaud your actions? Maybe it's because heaven wants nothing to do with you. And so he's thinking to himself, oh man. So yeah, Anarius just kill, just stabbed Lilith, and like, and the the kind of symbolism that goes along with it is the actual troops are winning their fight. Somewhat, it seems like they're winning. It's a pretty awesome way to kill that demon. So uh, I thought maybe this was some kind of like, uh, 
some kind of juke, like maybe the game's trying to pull one over on us. Like, no, he actually stabbed Lilith. It all ends with you. Oh, he's real sad about that. No. We made a choice. We did and make a that choice. They can never forgive. No matter what you tell yourself or who you sacrifice. Ah, see, he sees the error of his ways. Silence is their judgment. He's talking to heaven. What more would you have me do? What more would you have me do? Please. Tell me. Yeah, it would seem, Anarius, that the heavens are will not forgive you. See, he just got stabbed in the heart. Well, I guess where a heart would be. You belong in hell. Yeah, so she, he stabbed her in the stomach, which is very painful, but not immediately deadly, especially if you're a demon. And she stabbed him through the heart and tore his wings off. So it seems like Anarius did not win that exchange. And now, uh, and because of this, the army will fall as the leader has fallen. So yeah, it looked like they were winning that fight at first, but nope. And look, there's nothing in the armor. He's just a being of sound and light. It's kind of interesting. But yeah, the, the father is dead. The the one who, the father in the relationship that started this whole thing with created humans, created sanctuary, uh, he is now dead. See, so the prophecy at the very end, it said a spear of light piercing hatred's heart. So like, so, he, so Anarius is a being of light and his weapons are like of light. And so he used his spear to stab Lilith but he stabbed her in the stomach. He, it was a gut shot. He didn't stab her in the heart. But she then took his spear of light out of her stomach and stabbed him in the heart. So, like, was he the being of hatred? Like, he's supposed to be this angelic dude, but he was the one that had all the hatred in him, even though she's the daughter of hatred? Like, like all those negative things like all the corruption that the angel actually had was what the prophecy was kind of about about from the very beginning and everyone just assumed it was about Lilith because if that's where they're going with the story that would actually be like incredible like narrative redirection almost so now we got to witness that vision of Lilith killing Anarius and once again we somehow don't know what we're supposed to do and so the solution is to look with this look through the sightless eye magic device and it's like while we're using this magic donan please don't mess with the environment don't don't touch anything donan we are in hell Le keep your hands to yourself donan don't play oh donan what are you doing i i just told you don't mess with the wildlife donan oh look what you've done now the now the hell pillars are mad at us good freaking job donan you you did it you you, re you really spilled the beans this time oh so after mr donan here made us get ambushed by these pillars of dead he immediately he then agrees with laura that like look we should use the uh, sightless eye nonsense just because there's there's no other option before us i mean literally if you look on the map there's only one direction we could even walk but you know whatever it is a video game's got a video game so we use the magic looking device that worked so well the first time to once again spy on Lilith and see what she's up to. And we see that she is at the, uh, what is this, River of Fire? Yeah, this guy. Yeah, he, he guards the path that leads to the Cathedral of Hatred, which is where, um, which is where Mephisto's domain, like, the Mephisto's home, basically. So, so the reason she attacked Donan's estate and g grabbed the, the Soul Stone that we have now repaired was to free him and so he would use, uh, so sh he would owe her a favor, basically. So I'm guessing she would not be able to cross this river of fire without him, with, without Astaroth's blessing. But now, look, oh, the, the magic eye, she looks right at us. 
She knows exactly what we was doing. And now she has trapped us in a nightmare, which is just turns out to be a big Bosch rush. Oh, oh look, we run into Mephisto. I uh, forgot this. I almost forgot this happened. So this is the big dude himself. This is the father of Lilith, and he wants to help us because Lilith's plan is to absorb his essence and become a member of, uh, 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 become one of the top three, I'm guessing. So he sensed that we could end Lilith. He could sense that we were the main character. Of course you could. I won't lie. There will be a time when we become enemies. Yeah, probably. Like, probably in the very next game. So Mephisto guides us to where we need to go in order to get us out of this uh, nightmare trap. And we get back to the to the main to what the mainland, what's going on, and we find Nerel crying and Lorath and Doning laying down together. I don't know, it's not very clear exactly what happened, but it, 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 there may have been some fighting going on while I was trapped. But I don't know why no one's taking any action to actually help Donan. Like he's got a he's got a really bad wound, and like you and Lorath and Narel are like magic dudes, and I got loads of potions. I feel like however bad this wound of his is, it's very treatable in this kind of fantasy universe that we are currently in. But. Um, I guess not. He's too far gone. And so Mr. Donan here is about to depart from us. And it's it's just so sad. He makes it this far and, like, can't fully avenge his son. And he basically dies at the doorstep of victory. So Donan passes away. Very sad. Lorath stays behind because I guess he's just given up. Me and Nairel move forward and we get um, ambushed by Mephisto, Mr. Greater Evil. And he's just like, dude, you wouldn't partner with me. But maybe, maybe if I just give you no other option then you can actually accomplish what we need to you trusted a prime evil and i love this trust had nothing to do with it your friend saw reason instead if lila takes my essence sanctuary is lost so mephisto is talking seems like he's talking more to narel than he is talking to us the character but so he actually gives us a teleporter straight to his um cathedral immediately like i'm guessing that that river of fire or whatever is actually like a pretty long distance that Lilith is physically walking across. <laughs> Those wings on her back are just for show. I don't know. And like the like cutscene looked like she was mere meters away from her destination. I don't even know where the teleporter, how we got here before she did. So Mephisto was still talking to us saying like, yeah, you should ambush her and trap her in the soul stone. And Nairel is like, hey, listen, maybe we should capture Mephisto instead of Lilith. Because he is the bigger evil, after all. I mean, if you go by power levels, he is stronger than Lilith, so... Our entire venture through this game has been with one purpose. We, are, we were here to do one thing from the very get-go, and that is stop Lilith and destroy her or imprison her or do whatever we need to do. And then we get up to the very end of the game, and this side character has decided, listen... We should do this other thing instead, and the Lilith problem can be solved because you are the main character, and like, you can defeat anything. And so let's just do this other thing instead that's probably better to do in the long run. And if we keep, if we keep this open-ended approach, the developers will be able to, to kind of kick the can and leave things on a cliffhanger, and we can actually like get more out of our players this way by 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 dangling a dangling a little carrot in front of them so they can buy some more DLC or maybe a whole game entirely. So, you know, no power to the player. Nayrel has decided that the Soul Stone is going to get used on Mephisto, not on Lilith. I mean, he is the prime evil after all. So one of the biggest baddies in all of hell is now inside of that little crystal. And this portal opens up? If Mephisto is trapped in this uh, crystal and has like no influence, how did he open up this portal? Because I know it wasn't her. Look, he's right there. Like, that's him or his vessel or whatever. Like, I thought we just put him in this crystal. Is this, is, is this, this things not being explained or are these just potholes? Plot holes. So they leave. Nairel leaves seemingly with Mephisto. I mean, with him in the crystal and like together in his little wolf form. 
And now we're stuck in hell by ourselves. Turn our backs and boom, who do we see? Freaking Lilith right there. How intimidating. It's for the first time in a long time we're in the same room with her. And she is understandably not happy that her father's essence that we just stole is uh, no longer within her means to acquire. So now we get to fight the Daughter of Hatred. This is a five phase boss fight. It is quite intensive. But they definitely spent a lot of time working on this. But I'm able to clear it out, no problem. Oh, there's even a second phase, spoiler alert. Killing her once is good enough. The developers decided you must kill her twice. Uh, so I think that partial demon skeleton thing might have been what she uh, actually looks like. The, the whole humanoid thing is not genuine to what she actually, uh, her normal state of being is. But now the room is just covered in blood petals. I guess she doesn't actually spill blood, she spills blood petals. That's what we've been, um, that's what we were fed in the beginning of the game, oh, in that village, and I'm guessing that is why we are now. Yeah, so we are now, um, that's what makes it so special, is we consumed her blood and then survived that sacrificial ritual. And so now, here we are at the end, killing her, and like, like this event has come full circle. So, she basically tells us that we have only contributed once again to the eternal conflict. The fight between angels and demons hasn't actually stopped. We, <laughs> like, nothing is going to change. So, w what this tells me is that she was trying to be the solution, the thing that was going to prevent the end of, uh, or trying to prevent the eternal conflict from continuing. And so now we have just contributed to it, is what she is telling us, and that, or what she just told us, that the internal conflict will continue forevermore, will remain eternal because we have uh, we have stopped her from whatever she was trying to do. Now, Lilith is dead, seemingly. Although demons don't actually die in Diablo, they just get sent back to hell. But we killed her in hell. So I'm not sure what that means for her. Is that like a more permanent death? I'm not sure. I would not be surprised if Lilith makes a return in future Diablo uh, titles. So we, we make our way back uh, because Nairel took Mephisto's soul stone and said she would meet with Lorath. And we're like, it is done. Lilith is no more. Lilith is not trapped in the stone. We trap Mephisto in it. Yeah, so we tell Lorath that Mephisto has actually been helping us from the very beginning in some form or fashion. And our reward for him was to trap him in the soul stone. And so we, Lorath tells us that Nairel, this side character from the beginning of the game, that kind of a nothing character, is now run off with the soul stone. <laughs> Because she didn't meet with Laura like she said she was going to. Like, where did she go? So, Lilith is dead, but the game continues. That was Act 6, where it completed the final act, level 46. I should be only level 40, if you ask me. And we are back to our little desert temple with Donan and Lorath. Uh, well, excuse me, Lorath and Donan's body. We come back here looking for Nairel, and of course she's not there. So Nairel didn't meet up with Lorath, and she didn't wait for us at the temple. So what is going on? What happened to her? Maybe she went back to the Haradric vault that had all that information to do some more, do some more homework. Well, we leave the temple and find ourselves coming across. Oh, some more cathedral a holes. What do you want? So that Reverend Mother that we actually helped save while well, she escaped from hell after Donan gave her some kind of potion or whatever and she has told all of the cathedral that the Haradrim are actually demon worshippers and heretics so the first thing we see on our return home is these cathedral a-holes here to arrest us or at least arrest Lorath anyways and so our only course of action is to just wipe them out and so since we kill a bunch of cathedral soldiers. Yeah, she calls us dark magician, dark magicians or whatever. The Haradrim dark magicians. Ah, so she also not only does she want to wipe us out, she wants us to. She wants the soul stone for herself. So now these penitent knights of the cathedral will now be normal enemies to us, like in the open world. We will run across more knights to kill for in dungeons and such. It's just. One more enemy type. He says he's gonna go bury Donan in his home, and we are going to the Haradric Temple to try to find Nairel. Saying, like, listen, listen, this girl, this random girl we were told as a child, now has a freaking prime evil trapped in a soul stone, and she's just carrying it around one handed, mind you, carrying it around for, for whatever purposes she could have. 
So we, <clears throat> we go to the, the Haradric Temple, or excuse me, the Haradric Vault, and we discover a letter. We don't find Norel, we just find a note. And it's in that Haradric nonsense rune language that we can't read, so we have to go back to Lorath and get him to read it for us. This cutscene is being portrayed in like 20 frames per second. I wonder if it's being generated in world or not. So we bring the letter to Lorath for him to read. Narel has written us a farewell letter. So I've watched this cutscene twice now, or no, three times. And I just don't understand what is going on here. I guess that's supposed to be the point, but so we, we defeat Lilith and Narel just runs away with the soul stone of um of Mephisto like she goes on this cross country journey on her own with the magic stone came uh containing the prime evil or one of the prime evils and we're just we're just left there with our hands in our pockets like like what are we supposed to do here yeah she said we will need hope to face what comes next and his brothers to face him and his brothers like who is him is she talking about the freaking prime evils or is she talking about the angels because they got lots of uh, crusading brothers up there yeah she said she, there has to be a better answer to to for the eternal conflict like it's they're just not gonna tell us oh yeah the water starts hitting the paper it turns out there was rain i thought uh, lorath was crying but i don't think he's physically capable of crying so yeah, she reads us a farewell letter saying that she has taken the stone and she will not be seeing us again. And the game, and like the final cutscene of the game, is her sailing off into the sunset with freaking Mephisto. We will never see each other again. She says we'll never see each other again. Like, where are you going? The sanctuary isn't that large. There's not that many places you can actually go. But yeah, she said we have to prepare for their brothers and have to have hope for what is to come. And then it's like credits roll. It's just, it's so, uh, it, it feels so freaking shallow. <laughs> I wanted a good resolution to this. Like I wanted, I wanted to feel good about completing this game. But at the end of this, like the game over, credits roll in. And I, I feel so freaking drained. She must have been talking, like she said brothers. We must prepare for his brother. So she must be talking about the other primevals, Diablo and uh, Bale. He says releasing Mephisto from hell will have consequences, but it's not his, it wasn't his choice, it was ours. It wasn't our choice either. I didn't have any freaking choice. I gave the Soul Stone to Narelle and she did it on her own. So this game, the ending of this game is, oh, things aren't over. Narelle is gone. Mephisto is, is gone. The father and mother of Sanctuary are no longer he are here. So demons are going to start popping up just willy nilly. And there's more for you to do, main character. And um, until until we decide what happens next, like the developers, oh my god, <laughs> they're just like they didn't want to create a cohesive, well-rounded story, and um, that was asking too much. But instead, instead, what we can do is create uh, a story that ends on a cliffhanger, so that we can make sure our players stick around and now it does this the thing that so many games do nowadays like oh now that the game is over the game finally begins you go back to the tree of wisdom and it tells you look at all this cool end game activities for you to do there's nightmare mode there's all these uh, difficulties you can experience throughout these dungeons there's extra like collecting collectibles you missed on and there's so much for you to do while you wait for the developers to get around to actually finishing the game they started. <laughs> like, I guess, yeah. You can't, you can't be too hard on them. Like, they established an enemy at the beginning of the game, that being Lilith. Like, Lilith's the bad guy, you're the good guy, you have to deal with Lilith. And at the end, we did. We killed Lilith, and but there's this unresolved conflict of one of the side characters effing off with a friggin' soul stone containing a prime evil, and now it's just going to be our problem in the future. And the, and the lucky developers have all of this free reign to just shove some DLC down our throats or just wait six more years to make a freaking whole nother game. I, I was just so happy that the game is over and I can no longer play Diablo 4 anymore because it's just, it's like, that's the biggest reward of all. No, no, no fancy cutscenes, no fancy music, no achievements. 
no unlocks. My biggest reward of beating Diablo 4 is that I no longer have to play Diablo 4. <laughs> so, um, unless my uh, companions or friends get this game and get them to bring me back into it, uh, I think I am kind of done with the, like I don't want to play this game anymore I want to go play anything else but um, may, maybe um, maybe I'll be coming back to it in the future maybe there'll be some story expansion that I I get to pay extra for to finally figure out what the heck's going on with Narel. but um, or maybe not maybe the developers just leave it as is and say all right that was fun stick around for five more years while we make the next game and diablo 5 is right around the corner we promise <laughs> yeah here here is like whispers of the dead so remember that whole thing we did with elias where we like collected the bounty on the tree's behalf because he didn't pay up on the deal he made well they turned that little thing into an actual in-game mechanic and so now there is all kinds of debts that actually need to be collected and so it's just in-game content to go do stuff to to collect points for the tree to get resources and it makes it look like it's tied with the actual like main story of the game but i think i actually did this nonsense yeah i went i collected i collected their nonsense thinking that maybe there was some story to be squeezed out of this like there's there's some more cutscene for me to watch or something but they just tell me i've made the world a better place they give me a pat on the back give me a cache of like pretty mediocre gear and then they go to sleep and they're like, yeah, come back later. <sighs> it's like, uh, there's so many good reviews about Diablo 4. Like, there's so many people saying so many good things about it. And I'm just, I'm not feeling what those people are feeling. <laughs> it's like my, the thought crossed my mind. Like, how long can you own a game before you can refund it? The story is like less than, less than a day. It's like 18 hours, 24 hours, maybe. So yeah, that's not happening. I hope... Like, if you enjoyed Diablo and you um, had a good time at the end of this long journey, you know, good for you. Um, I'm just very happy that it is finally over. Because this 25-hour gaming experience really feels like 100 hours to me. I am just drained both mentally and emotionally. <laughs> but I am looking forward to working on whatever comes next. I don't know exactly what the next project of mine is going to be, but it, it will. It, it'll be nice to to work on something other than a Diablo 4 for, you know, three weeks in a row, almost four, you know, coming up on four weeks, my goodness. <laughs> With that being said, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from me, and until the next one, this is not goodbye for good, just goodbye for now.